Hey guys, you're tuning into Dr. Burst from Auckland, New Zealand, and you are tuning into another episode focused on the Avondale Pavilion project. Uh, on this uh, month's episode, we have a special guest with us. We have Gasp from RFC. Welcome, man. Good day. So thanks for joining us. Um, so for the people that don't really know what this is about, or this is your first time watching this episode, uh, this project is basically centered around Avondale Art Park, and we have partnered with uh, Panuku Development and some students from Unitech from the Art School of Architecture, and they've basically constructed a pavilion, which has now been based in this particular space in Avondale. And every month I get an artist to come along and repaint the pavilion. So this month we've basically had Gasp come along to do this this work and he's created an awesome work so we're just going to unpack a little bit of his journey and his story uh, in this kind of graffiti and mural world so um, Gus could you tell us a little bit about your journey how did you get into this this world of graffiti and street art and painting in public spaces I guess it's quite a long story a, a long journey like I started like a lot of a, other others had where you know, I was introduced to it through high school and kids and just what I'd seen around my neighborhood. And like most kids at high school those days, everyone had just a tag, you know, like, I guess it wasn't like I had a broader understanding of graffiti in an international kind of sense. It was just sort of more of a local kind of, um, approach to it where I was just influenced from the stuff I'd seen around my neighborhood in my city. And what type of stuff were you seeing? Uh, it was more straights and um, around Kingsland and Morningside and Greyland. What was it like growing up in, in those neighborhoods? It was good. I guess it was, you know, like um, it was a lot rougher than it was now. It's changed a lot. Has it been gentrified? <laughs> <laughs> I guess you could say that, yeah. Well, Ponsonby for sure. And so, at that time during high school, was was there also quite a lot of other kids that were painting graffiti, or is it just something that you noticed on the street? Yeah, definitely a lot of my peers were painting, well, sneaking out at night and just doing tagging. But um, I guess it was... Um, wasn't until later until I sort of discovered it and learned more about the history and where it sort of originated in New York. Just sort of um, gaining more understanding of the culture and becoming more infatuated with it and on a, I guess, a deeper level. And did your parents know that you, <laughs> that you were sneaking out painting graffiti at that time? Yes, my mum knew, but... Um, she wasn't too happy about that, no. We, how old were you again? About 13. 13, wow. So this is before high school, kind of, almost. Yeah, just at the start of high school, when I was just kind of, um, you know, just hanging out with mates and just sort of getting into it from a... I guess it was the style around was more influenced from, you know, LA, like movies like Colours and stuff like that. As, that's where the sort of style of the lettering came from. But, you know, it's more of an Auckland thing, like, um, I guess the KOAs or, and Bonus was like an influence on me at the first instance. Mm. But obviously it's moved on later to a more sort of a graph thing, rather than just a tagging. And do you think that at that time, the um, when you kind of first started getting into graffiti, was it something that you kind of got into on your own, or was, or did you have a peer or like a friend or something like that that you know that was like your partner in crime almost? Yeah, I did have one friend that um, that was a mutual friend of me and Askew. That's sort of how I started getting into that, you know, tagging. But like, we didn't even really think about doing pieces or anything like that. It wasn't even in our minds, you know. It was about getting up. Yeah. Well, it wasn't even about getting up. It was just having your name 
around like it was just having our name that you could put up you know it wasn't like you didn't even we didn't even think about it that in depth like we had to go all city or anything we didn't even think about that it was just having a go have you ever had that kind of uh, mindset of needing to go all city and because that's always been like a really big i think attitude you know coming from say like new york or something like oh you got to be all city and do you think that ever came into your frame of mind i'm not sure about all city but like later on it was more of a local thing rather than all city but um yeah i did have that mind frame at one point but um it was later from when i um first sort of discovered it at what point or what was the thing that kind of set you on this path to start painting things like pieces and things like that more colorful stuff well again it was like when i first started that was a separate thing and then it was i was always interested in art so it was like i'd rediscovered it i'd rediscovered it you know because like um i kind of left it alone because it, it was it was just trouble and i didn't want to you know, you know, get into too much trouble. Then later I rediscovered it and sort of found, um, you know, a copy of Subway Art or something and just, you know, it reignited the whole thing. It was kind of like that first thing of, of the kind of gangbanger kind of style. My friends, my other friends, who weren't really gangster or anything, they were just, we listened to you know, Nirvana and Beastie Boys and stuff and just, you know, hung out as teens skateboarding. We actually kind of took the piss out of the gangster thing and I had friends that had tags like Special K and Mullet and stuff like that. That was more just mocking the whole thing and then it wasn't until after that until me and my friend Sens had um, taken it a bit more I don't know, seriously, or I'm not, I'm not sure if you want to say seriously, but just a, a bit more into like the actual culture of graffiti that originated in New York. So tell me a little bit about your main kind of writing partner at that time. You mentioned Sense. Yeah. Is, is he quite a pivotal person in this journey of yours? Well, I feel like I sort of started off on my own, you know, and then it wasn't until a little bit after that that you know I sort of teamed up with Sins and um, he had a lot of drive and wanted to paint a lot and we're kind of in competition with each other which sort of made us both grow a lot and um, just push each other to get busy you know and do a lot of stuff. I know that you're also ripping a crew called RFC could you tell me a little bit about the background of that because I remember in, in the 2000s going through Disrupt and and seeing, you know, a lot of RFC stuff and, you know, seeing all of the members and that. What was the... How did that crew form? Again, it was just me and Sens. We'd been painting together for a while, just basically learning how to do a throw-up and around our lo local neighbourhood, you know. Are you guys the founding members? Yeah. yeah. You know, we decided we needed to... Uh, crew it was just the two of us but we decided we needed a crew to put up I don't know we were running from cars that were passing so we couldn't we wouldn't get spotted and the original meaning was um, running for critics and then later we had younger members like Deos and Vino and then it grew from there with Prompt, Kai's, Slope and other members yeah, it sort of just grew from there. And so what, what do you think at that time, having a crew to kind of rep and be a part of, what did that kind of mean to you and how did that affect your drive with Graph? I guess it made me feel less like um, I was going out just doing it on my own, you know, and more like I had like a, you know, a team or, a, you know, um, made it more of a social thing rather than just a sort of um anti-social thing, anti -social just going thing out. Yeah. yeah for me i guess reflecting on like being part of crews you know throughout the whole of my kind of graph career that always get, gave me a certain type of energy and motivation definitely yeah did, did that do the same for you 
Oh, absolutely, because you kind of, um, you feel like you have responsibility or some kind of a drive to represent for not only yourself, but for your crew and in a bit more of a, um, less of a personal thing and more of a, for the crew, you know? Has there ever been like a, like a graph mentor that you've ever had, or has it always been building off, you know, the experiences and things with, with your crewmates? Before I started painting with Sins, um, I was painting with Riot. Just like, you know, following his lead. He's got his own kind of outlook on graffiti, which is kind of separate from a lot of our other people's, which was like, yeah, just go and do it. But he didn't really teach me anything. I just watched him in aura, you know. Could you tell me a little bit about Riot? Who, who is he? Riot was probably the most out famous tagger from those times. So what time were we talking? Yeah, like the nineties. Nineties, yeah. And that specific to early nineties, yeah. Auckland or Auck- yeah, quite specific to Auckland, but like he'd been to Wellington and stuff as well. And so, how did you meet him? Well, I met him through another guy who wrote Dal. It was around actually Herm Bay area when I'd actually bumped into Levi as well that's a not that we're actually backtracking a bit here that's just that's the era just in my graph journey where I was first kind of being introduced to the idea of going and do a, a throw up or something you know and so when when you met Riot um did he instantly kind of take you under his wing and what I was, think we just kind influenced of like... off each other, like, and, um, yeah, it was just good to have someone else that was into it, and I'd already seen his work around, and I was like... So he was already kind of up at that point before he lot. met you? Yeah, yeah, a lot, yeah. Wow. What was it like painting as a crew? Did you guys do many productions and things like that, or what was the kind of approach as a crew? I guess at first we were just going out and doing our own thing, but, like... Once we'd kind of done that for a while, yeah, pushing it for productions and um, have like us doing pieces and and um, dials on the background and stuff. Mm. Yeah. And one of the most um, notable things that I remember was the incredible work that RFC did at the Right for Gold battle. I really loved that movie uh, that yeah, you guys painted. Right, yeah. and, and I mean, that was probably <coughs> the first time I... I had witnessed you guys as a crew painting you know yeah. because i hadn't seen you guys painting before but could you tell me a little bit about what the what the strategy behind that wall was i guess it was kind of like a pushing for this sort of i don't know people like to call it anti-style or just the way the letter forms are a bit more kind of loose yeah that was a thing that um sense pushed a lot because he was really into that sort of um approach to style which is sort of removed a bit from the 90s kind of just you know got your skinny outlines and had to have the tech pieces um it's kind of hard to put into words but it's more of a like a throwback to the 70s sort of train riding and more just sort of free and um and kind of almost goofy or like um it seems like more fun rather than too technical than um an advance like that a lot of people like that it's like some people get frustrated with art and um you know patience with doing something and that sort of style just lent itself more to have, having fun with it you know mm. what was the years that people like Ewok and Bates and all those guys and Totem, Teal, a couple of those guys had come over to New Zealand. I also recall seeing a piece that you had painted on a wall with them, I think maybe in New Lynn or something like that. What was that experience like, having some of those guys over? Oh, that was amazing. By that time, I was fully immersed in painting graffiti at pieces and and, um, the culture and the scene that we had in Auckland. It was so good having those overseas writers come down here because it really injected like a you know style and feeling or 
you know, uh, motivation into the scene, uh, which connected us with the bigger thing. And down in New Zealand, we feel like a bit away from the world, but having those guys that you've only seen stuff in magazines and and stuff actually painting with you in your city it was pretty amazing really but i mean even at that time uh, i remember the piece that you painted was like a super super burner it was so dope those people that came over you know it was great to feel like you're part of something bigger yeah were there many things like magazines and internet and things that kind of helped to develop your style or was the presence you know physical the physical presence of people coming over international guests to new zealand did that play a big factor in the development of the scene or oh absolutely yeah well we had like i guess our only kind of uh one of our only sort of exposure to stuff outside of our scene or new zealand Auckland, was um you know things like the source magazine and other um graffiti magazines that were pretty hard to come by yeah you'd just see the little snippets of stuff i guess that by that time there would have been maybe not art crimes or something i'm not sure if it was that that introduced me to their stuff it was just yeah random little things that you see through magazines and stuff you know and so when when people like totem and bates and all of these guys were over did you what did you learn from them oh a lot yeah, well, I think I took, it took me a while to really um, take what I'd seen and sort of process it into something that um, I could use. But like, I guess style-wise, you know, like, you'd notice when like one of the overseas guys that were influence, influential had come over and you'd see the, the way that the, the technique and the way that they are painted and you'd just see everyone else try, everyone trying to give it a go. For example, like Ewok could pretty much just outline his whole piece and then fill it in. So it's like a back way, a backwards way of, of thinking about it that no one had really even explored, which sort of opened it up to a, another it, way of painting. Is that kind of like a working dark to light or something? Yeah, like do the outline, the, the black outline first and then totem like he had a lot he had some tips for us like as far as using the spray can in different ways just techniques and stuff so it's really good painting that wall out in um new Lynn that time the reason my piece was so wild was because it was the first time we'd actually had access to like the full belton range of mm. colors and i wanted to use Every, every color <laughs> I could possibly use. So, so that sounds pretty dope in terms of having international guests come over and, and kind of share some of their knowledge. Um, so I guess kind of moving forward. So we have this kind of period where you're getting into pieces, you're painting burners, you're, you're doing all of these things. You mentioned just then also that you were starting to get access to better materials, right? Yeah. So what does this notion of better materials look like? What, what does that mean? Before we had Belton or Molotov, you basically had to tinker away and find a way of doing it, like ingenuity. Like, I don't know, like some people used to do things like put newspaper underneath the caps, like for like die mark to make the cans come out with skinnier lines and I used something called hammerite which was like you'd shave back the cap but it hurt your finger but you could get these skinny lines and which was a, still a challenge like it didn't always work right for you and you're just sort of like like the old thing where you're just taking a bunch of caps from your you know um, hairspray, hairspray and all that so just, just testing out what would work I and mean, when you got a hand, your hands on a can of Belton, you were just, it just felt like the sky was the limit. Like there was no, nothing holding you back. From, there was, it opened up the possibilities, well, you know, within your skill level, but you know, it was, it was no longer fighting with the materials. It was more just, what can you do with it, you know? What was the, what was the rest of the scene like? 
at that time as well like obviously everybody being able to get access to the good quality paint did that also then encourage everybody to step up as well I think it did, yeah. I mean, there was a lot of people out there before we got the good paint that was... Or everyone was doing some pretty good quality stuff. Like with, R- with, like, hardware paint? Yeah, yeah. like RTR and, and, you know, TMD and Fat One and all those guys doing full-colour productions down the train tracks, you know. And um, I guess once the we got the good paint melting, it was just... It just skyrocketed, you know. Nowadays, having a bit more access to materials, I mean, to paint, where you you get to, you buy it, you know, and um, opposed to acquiring it through other means, did sort of help chill out the scene, I guess, in some ways, you know. Mm. Like I said, acquiring this the spray paint through other means and just a lot of some of the people in the scene were a bit more. Uh, to be feared mm. and um, yeah there was a lot more of that kind of going on you know yeah. Absolutely. I don't want to name any names but sure. there was you know like things like smash and grabs for spray paint mm. going down which I don't think you'd see much of just how much it's changed and I think it's for a more positive good thing like yeah, it's, it's more accessible for people and um, places like Avondale for you to express yourself without it actually having to do anything with the, again, criminality or the aspect of graffiti, which is, you know, it can be, like some people say, you know, it can either save your life or ruin your life. and at a point there it was probably a balance between the two and mm. which way I was going to push it if I kept on the way I was I don't think it would have been good but luckily I've always been interested in art so you know at one point it kind of clicked that this graffiti thing wasn't just a sneaking out being naughty at night but it actually had, you know... Um, it had merit to it. Yeah, it had, and something that you could push even further into doing gallery shows and commission murals and stuff, you know. So that's probably a good segue into some of the other things that, that have kind of spawned out of this uh, interest in graffiti. I know that... You know, in previous conversations, you had also mentioned that you had studied art school and stuff like that. I studied a freelance animation school, which was like Warner Brothers um, animation. That's the first kind of art study I'd done, which, um, I don't know, just gave you a bit more skill with drawing. But um, no, it wasn't, I sort of made the jump from graffiti into, well, I wouldn't call it a jump, but it's a progression into art on my own, you know? I'd made that kind of, just from being influenced from a lot of different things and just art in general, and it sort of made sense at the time because I was really interested in pop art as well, just to sort of blend the two. And it wasn't until later till I went to art school, but. Where, where did you go to art school? Um, Elon. Oh yeah, and and how did you find it there? Were they accepting of the things that you were wanting to do, or was it, or was what they were teaching quite a different trajectory? Because sometimes the the kind of fine arts world can kind of rub up against what we're you know doing in this kind of graph street art mural type world. The, the discourses of stuff sometimes are quite different. Yeah, absolutely. It was. It was. Yeah a lot like that I mean I guess they were accepting to some point but sort of like you know the graffiti didn't does and still doesn't have like a standing in the fine art world which is quite um like put it this way you go in there with your own sort of um views of what 
you think art is to yourself and you'll pretty much be just chopped down to like a level you know square one and um build you up again it's like that i was always trying to challenge the notion of the institution itself and why does it have to exist within the walls of an art school or an institution that um sort of like you know they make art for other artists or intellectuals and not so much for the everyday people there's a lot to learn about art and philosophy mm. and the way that they sort of work together and you know conceptual art and there's a whole there's a whole kill of it, a whole can of worms sorry a whole can of worms that can be opened up that's just normal everyday people wouldn't even think about but when you try to sort of like make it about graffiti it can be a bit of a pushback I mean one of my tutors said told me that I could probably teach him more about graffiti than he could so I should probably try to just branch out and try some new things to just get I guess more understanding of a broader sort of sense of where you fit into the whole art world or just art in general I guess I went to art school to get a better understanding of of it all you know after graduating you have also carried on painting graffiti Um, you've had a studio practice you create works in the space here but also I know that you produce works in public spaces you know as, as a job basically yeah you're a full-time artist yes and so what does that line of work actually look like for you it's more like leaning towards the design so years after art school i studied graphic design which is sort of lends itself more towards what i do for my job which is creating custom murals for different clients which can be quite varied in content dealing with emails, inquiries, and um, coming up with designs for clients, quotes, um, going to locations and painting um, the murals. Plus plus also trying to push my own art style. Mm. Do you still get much time to develop work in the studio or is it mostly kind of commercial based? I would like to have more time to create my own stuff, but yeah, it's just um yeah it can be quite um challenging to do both what what do you think is the greatest challenge of of being a full-time artist in in Auckland or New Zealand like making enough money to survive or just you know um there's a lot of room for commercial uh for people who want to follow a commercial artist um path you know like you know well graphic design and that that and like you know they've got their film industry which is like painting techniques and it's sort of like um yeah there's a there's two different worlds i guess with an art it's like it sort of blends together but you know design and i mean guess i guess commercial art and art and galleries there is a bit of a difference to that another part of your journey i think you have also done set design, right? That's also another... Yeah, I've worked in the film industry in a few different roles. So what, what type of work and does also, that involve? And also working with um, some of the people that do kind of fit-outs for shops, interior design, and um, painting techniques. Hmm. Is that kind of like the finishing and stuff like that? Yeah, finishes and stuff, yeah you know faux art which is like creating something to look like wood or Mm. marble or something that's just yeah so kind of thinking back to this pavilion that you recently painted um what what is the aesthetic or kind of concept behind what you created there um it's like the kind of mashup of imagery from you know popular culture and the derived from you know the 1950s 60s 70s sort of um style of like 
maybe wallpaper or ca little cartoons and stuff like that and like with the characters from pop art like the romance comic comic art sort of stuff and just putting it all together in a sort of like a colorful splash of of like mashed up different patterns and color and and just having fun with it basically awesome man and so kind of thinking about that space that that pavilion's actually in yeah uh, it's obviously a legal wall for people to paint graffiti do you think that spaces like that is important for the scene i think it's really important um just to be able to have a place where you can paint a wall without it being a trouble uh, it actually i think elevates the level of of work that's being created and also makes it a safer place for people who are interested and don't want to have to go through the whole journey that we have gone through which as I said earlier can be can have a lot of negative as aspects on people's personal lives how do I put that just because it's like the legality of it mm. so having somewhere where it's a permission um, place like Avondale is I think it's great for um, for the scene and also you know for anyone that was looking to just have a go I mean it's it's still limited space there because like it's quite a high demand for the space there and quite a, a high turnover on the wall space there but when some quality goes up people try to I guess sort of that stays longer yeah I guess it elevates the the work mm. Do you think that Auckland needs more spaces like that? I think absolutely. Because I think that would be great. Yeah. I think places like you know Melbourne or something with the laneways, that's to me is like a perfect example of a place that's adopted that culture of yep. what artists do, and turn you know the councils turned it into like a tourist attraction. People do like street art tours and whatever, and you know it's this kind of self curated type space where people's just constantly adding work there and people want to participate people want to go check it out yeah like Melbourne compared to Auckland for the amount of places if you just wanted to say I want to go paint today with your friends there's way more than there's here. a lot more there's like millions more <laughs> I went over there and it was awesome yeah yeah that's wicked man uh, all right, so we might wrap it up there. Uh, thank you so much, Gus, for joining us for this uh, episode and telling us a little bit of your backstory and and where you're kind of up to at the moment with all, all the, your kind of mural work and stuff. Um, so for all of our listeners, uh, tune in for the next episode. Um, the next episode for the Pavilion is going to feature myself, so I'm going to be updating the, the artwork. There's going to be a bit of a stop-motion clip which kind of explains the process, but then also... Uh, we're going to unpack the the journey, uh, the creative journey, with a bit of an extended real-time version. So thanks for tuning in. Make sure you like, subscribe, and uh, look forward to sharing the next video with you in the coming month. Okay, thanks, Bobby. <laughs>